All right, we're in section 3.1, and we're continuing with those power functions um, with some shifts. So we're not adding any more x terms yet, but we might add some constants. So if we remember from a previous chapter, we can add and subtract a constant on the outside, which creates a vertical shift up by c when we add, or down by c when we subtract. So it just shifts the shape up or down. Um, those internal shifts, the left-right ones, are inside parentheses. So they're inside the function, inside the power. Um, so when we add c, we went to the left by c. And then when we subtracted c, we went to the right by c. We did these back in 2, 2, if you want to go get a little refresher. So let's go ahead and jump into an example. Just adding some graph paper. So we have negative x plus 3 all to the 6th power minus 1. So let's start with our parent function, which will be x to the 6th. So we just learned that that kind of looks like um, x squared. It's just a little flatter, right? It's an even power. Um, and as that power gets bigger, it just gets a little more flat. Cool. So let's see. Our next shift, I guess we'll do purple. Um, I'm, I like to kind of work my way in out, so plus 3 inside tells me to shift to the left by 3. So 1, 2, 3. Um, don't worry about the y-intercepts for now, we're just doing sketches. So we went to the left by 3. And then again, I'm working my way in out, so I'm going to go to the negative. That negative on the outside tells me to reflect the graph upside down which is about the x-axis. That makes it upside down. So it's the same graph, but upside down. And then our final shift is that minus 1. The minus 1 is telling me to shift down by 1. So we'll go down 1. So that'll be right here. And so the pink graph would be my final graph. Cool. So that's how we can graph by shifting. Um, but this is really only helpful if we only have a single x term, right? Once I have x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th, it gets a little more complicated. Um, so we're going to go and check out this new thing called end behavior. End behavior is basically like what's happening at the end of the graph. So the end is like infinity and negative infinity. What's happening over here and over here? So the way we write it in notation is what happens as x goes to infinity or negative infinity? The arrow we read as goes to. So how f of x behaves when the absolute value is very large. Absolute value means we're either going to infinity or negative infinity, and we call this end behavior of a polynomial. So I'm going to introduce a theorem and then kind of describe it a little. So if we have absolute value of x is very large, very large means basically infinity or negative infinity, then the graph of the polynomial actually resembles the graph of just the leading term. So we can kind of ignore the rest for the end behavior only. Um, so let me show you on Desmos. No, that's not Desmos. This is Desmos. And see what you think. So let's check out 5x to the, I don't know, let's do 6 power plus anything. I'm just making up a polynomial. Plus 2x to the fifth plus x to the third, right? Just lots of terms. Oops, I made a typo. Plus x to the third plus 100, plus 10 actually. Where'd it go? What did I do? There we go. So there's our graph. Here we see some behavior. We don't know what this stuff is yet, but let's look at the end behavior only. So what's only happening at infinity? So I'm going to graph 5x to the sixth. And right now it looks different, right? They look like different graphs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out like really, really far. So let's change. You can just do it here. Let's do 0 to 100. 
a thousand, and then for the y's, we'll just do zero to a hundred. Let's see. All right, I went too far. All right, you'll notice the end of the graph looks the same. All right, they're both getting big at the same spot, even though the middle looks different. All right, the middle is different, but the end is the same. So let me try another one. Let's do um, 2x, 3x to the fourth. That'll be just the leading term. And then we'll do 3x to the fourth um, plus 2x cubed plus x squared. Why not? So again, right, the middle looks different. This one's a little easier to see as well. Right, the middle behavior is a little bit different, but the end behavior is the same. Right, they're both getting big. And let's see, if I change it to a negative three, you'll see they both flip upside down. Right, they have the same end behavior. So the middle behavior is different. We'll talk about middle behavior later. But the end behavior, where is the graph approaching, is the same. So let's see why this works algebraically. So hopefully the graph convinced you a little bit visually. But let's look at the algebra version of it. So let's see. Um, what we can do is we're going to factor out the highest power to kind of convince you that the leading term is doing all the work. So I'm going to factor out. Um, let's actually just factor out the x squared. It'll be easier. And so we're left with 3. 2x divided by x squared is how we would factor that out, plus 1 over x squared. So that gives me x squared. We get 3 plus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. And so what happens is x gets really, really big. So think about plugging in really big numbers. So 2 over like a million is almost 0. 2 over 10 million is almost 0, right? 1 over a million squared is almost 0. So these get close to 0 when x gets really big or really big negatively. So those are practically nothing. And so then as x gets to infinity, this graph approaches the 3x squared. So again, this is only the end behavior. It's not the middle. And then if you wanted to check on a calculator, you could actually plug in like a really big number. So what if we did like 3, we plugged in x equals 10,000 or 100,000? So if you have your cal a calculator with you, um, you can even just like go to Google and type calculator and you can calculate things. So let's compare our f of x versus our leading term only. So if you have your calculator, I think if you plug in, you get 300,000, 20 and one versus 300,000, 300 million, oops. And so these are really close to each other. Um, if we think about, we're in the 300 millions, 20,000 isn't much. Um, so let's look at the different types of end behavior and then we'll start graphing in a little bit. So we're gonna consider the leading term only of my polynomial. And then the rules have to do with if it's odd or an even power. Yeah, odd or even, and then is the integer, um, is the coefficient uh, positive or negative? So there's four cases. So if we have an odd power and a positive integer, so odd power, positive coefficient, it's gonna kind of look like x cubed. So it's gonna start at the bottom and it's gonna go up. We don't know what's happening in the middle though. So it's not necessarily an x cubed graph the middle will change. If we change it to a negative coefficient, it does the opposite, just like when we reflect x cubed. Right, again, we don't know what's going on in the middle, but it's pretty similar. So this will be an odd power negative coefficient.
And as we go through this chapter, we'll figure out how the middle fills out. Um, so even powers are gonna look like x squared functions. So if it's even and positive, it's gonna go up and up in both sides. And then a negative power just flips it upside down, just like x squared gets flipped. So this will be an even power with a negative coefficient. And so we'll figure out how to fill in the middle in the next video. Um, so right now, this is only telling us what's happen happening at the end. Um, so let's write it in written notation. So what does this look like in math language? And then we'll figure out how to fill out the gaps in the next video. Um, so if I want to describe end behavior, um, basically end behavior is what happens as x goes to negative infinity and what happens as x goes to positive infinity. That is what, end, this is the definition of end behavior. These are the two things I'm asking. So negative infinity will be the left side. Um, I notice that the graph is going down, so it will be going down to positive infinity. So as x goes to negative infinity, sorry, the graph is going down to negative infinity. So f of x is also going to negative infinity. So these arrows are shorthand notation for that. And then positive infinity will be the right side. What is the function doing? The function again is going down, so as x goes to infinity, f of x is going to negative infinity. If the graph were going up instead, then we would say positive infinity. So that's end behavior. Um, so we'll talk about how to fill in the gaps in the next video.